If you're watching this video, you are someone who's looking to get more prepared. Maybe you are already prepared or you think you are, or you're just looking for some other perspective and how to get more prepared. And the reason I say more prepared is personally, I don't believe anyone here in the United States of America is actually prepared for a truly catastrophic event. Some war on our soil, famine, an actual pandemic, the dollar crashing, an EMP, you know, whatever it happens to be, something very large. People are not actually prepared for that. But there's always room to prepare more and to set yourself up for success in the case of something catastrophic that happens or maybe something a little bit smaller, like a natural disaster, a tornado, a hurricane, because those things are happening in our country from time to time. We don't necessarily have just really big stuff happening all the time. But when big stuff does happen around the world, uh, like what's going on over in Europe and in the Middle East, people here in the United States get a little bit fearful and they wonder, hey, what should I buy? What should I get to increase my preparedness so that if something similar happens here in our own country, I'm not completely helpless. So I'd like to cover four different concepts to think about as you are trying to get more prepared. Not completely prepared, because that doesn't necessarily exist, but just more prepared for what could happen in the future. And the first one is make a list of all the things that you think you should have in the process of being prepared. This list is ultimately going to serve as a purchasing guide or sort of a purchasing plan because most people out there probably can't go out and drop the kind of money that we're talking about when I start bringing stuff up here on the table and giving you all some different ideas to invest in. Most people can't go out and just buy everything right away. It's going to have to take years of preparation to actually acquire all of that equipment. But if you can make a list right now and you can follow it, what that will allow you to do is buy stuff before the panic even happens. None of us should have to panic buy when something happens in another part of the world and people make a run on toilet paper or on firearms or on ammunition. Some of those things should have been bought ahead of time and that's why we make a plan and we try to stick to it. Concept number two is there is no right or wrong answer of what to buy when and how much. So if there's panic buying going on on ammo and you wonder, hey, should I buy 1,000 rounds or 5,000 rounds or 10,000 rounds? Well, none of those answers, if you end up answering it yourself and going on buying it, is going to be wrong. Now, what could start to be an issue is if you only invest in that item, which brings me to concept number three, which is don't put all your eggs in one basket. And I see this all the time in the gun industry. People go out and they only buy ammo. Well, they only buy magazines, but they don't have ammo to load into them. Or they only buy rifles, but they don't ever put optics lights or upgrade them or do anything. And they're just putting all their money into one thing while foregoing all the other things that should be considered to be prepared because they're so focused on one item. They get that tunnel vision of what's going on. So we definitely don't want to be doing that. We want to try to balance some of our purchasing to broaden our capability so that we can be more prepared for what could happen. And concept number four, there has not been a scenario so far, at least in recent history here in the United States, where the panic buying of what you did buy or did not buy heavily affected you after the fact. We haven't actually had a panic buy going into a war. We actually haven't had panic buying going into some other major catastrophe. I'm not even going to count the toilet paper of the great year 2020 as counting as one of these things. And ultimately, when it comes to buying equipment to be prepared, you don't know if you did it right until the thing happens. And that's just how it is. You really don't know if you're winning or not. All you know is you're collecting all the items. You know, cool, I can make fire. Cool, I can do some water stuff. I've got guns and kit and gear and night vision to do uh, night vision-y gun things if I need to. But you're not going to know that you're winning until, well, the thing just happens. And that's why trying to be well-rounded with your equipment and have a, a, a wide variety of items when you might only need three of them, maybe all of them, maybe none of them, um, is really what it takes to be prepared because we don't know what we're going to need when something happens, but we definitely want to avoid relying on panic buying, which is what most Americans do nowadays. So having said all of that, I want to give you guys some ideas of equipment that you should be buying ahead of time, not during panic buying season. We obviously right here already have ammunition and magazines. There's a good political reason to buy lots of magazines. Uh, when states are trying to ban magazines, but they're allowing grandfathering, uh, such as in California and some other states, yes, it makes complete sense to focus your purchasing efforts on magazines during that time, because after that, you can go back to buying your compasses, your maps, your food, your water, all your other stuff. So there's good political reasons to buy magazines at any time, at all times. 
ammunition, you should be purchasing that and using it for training also at all times. Your defensive ammo might be a little bit different because you're not going to be burning through that all the time. Uh, but for the most part, people understand the importance of buying magazines and ammo. They just may not understand the importance of purchasing some of the other things while they're focus on, uh, focusing on these. And the first item is going to be a way to start a fire. Next one you should think about a headlamp, a way to see, an OP piece of equipment. And if you don't have a firearm, I recommend a pistol first, something you can easily carry on your body. A way to filter water. Now, this is a massive subject that could be talked about for hours and hours. I'm not even going to attempt to do that, and I'm not an expert at this. But everyone that does understand that, hey, you can die without water in just a few days, so you probably need a way to manage your own water in the case that the water supply is contaminated or there's just no good water in the U.S., and you've got to do something about that. Medical equipment. You can go absolutely ham with medical equipment. You can just get a bunch of boo-boo first aid st stuff. You could get full trauma. You could learn how to do IVs and get bags of saline. That can go all over the place. But you'd be surprised how many people don't even have basic medical equipment for dealing with simple trauma, simple injuries. You can never go wrong buying tourniquets and having them all over the place. So your long gun, your rifles, most of you probably already own these because you probably bought them back in 2020 or 2016 or there's a four year election cycle for buying guns. Uh, so you have your rifles. You might want to go out and purchase a shorter upper or something in a different caliber, maybe 300 blackout to expand your capability beyond just whatever gun you currently own. Land nav is something that we've talked about a little bit. You can't always necessarily rely on your smartphone and your GPS to know where you are or where you're going. There's a ton of really cool technology out there, such as the Enreach. Isaac has a great video talking about these. Various other GPS devices from Garmin. You can also just get the traditional try and true compass and printed maps, and then walk around and figure out where you are. After you have your medical, your water, a way to start a fire, your headlamp, your pistols, your maps, your rifles and everything, your magazines and your ammo, you probably need a way to carry the actual stuff on you. A chest rig is the most economical option and solution when it comes to just carrying a bunch of stuff. Obviously, it doesn't give you any protection as far as like armor, uh, but a lot of folks out there can't necessarily spring for armor right away. This is sort of the bare minimum. You need a way to be able to carry your ammo. You need a way to carry the other stuff and you can get good chest rigs, whether it's one of ours or from another company for not a whole lot of money. Rifle upgrades. After buying some of this, and again, this is not necessarily the guide for what to buy when. This is just to give you ideas of things you might want to purchase or think about buying if you don't already have these things. But at some point in the process, I do recommend spending some money on upgrading your current weapons. It could be anything from adding a pistol light to your pistol. It could be adding an optic to your pistol, which I highly recommend, which might require you have a different holster. That's okay. There's lots of good options out there. I might be a little bit biased about that. Upgrading your rifle could mean new optics. Um, you, should spend more, you should expect to spend more money on your optics than anything else on the gun. It's literally the thing that lets you shoot and hit stuff and you see the target through it. So spending some money on your optics is very important because that will actually allow you to hit stuff. Slings, if you don't already have those, definitely think about those. At some point in the process, you might want to consider purchasing some nicer ammo uh, with better term terminal ballistics, uh, such as Mark 262 uh, or some other, there's tons of other stuff out there, Hornady Tap, cool rounds out there that is a little bit different than your training ammo, your Wolf, your Tula, your 55 grain ball ammo. So in this case, there's some mags here with, and I've got 262 ammunition. Yes, it's expensive to get into. This ammo can cost anywhere from a dollar to a dollar fifty a round, but you don't have to have a whole lot of it. It might only be, hey, I've just got five mags loaded up with this ammo. It's enough to fill my chest rig. It's enough to have one in the gun, and I have that and my training ammo as stockpile if I absolutely have to dip into that. So think about having some nicer ammo because that can make a difference. Upgrading your rifles with certain equipment and your handgun. 
As far as suppressors go, I do not see suppressors being a panic buy option simply because they take forever to get approved by the ATF. This is something that should require planning way ahead of time, which goes back to my recommendation to have a purchase plan where if you do have a suppressor on there for a thousand bucks, eight hundred dollars, also know, hey, it's going to take nine months to get. So even after I've set aside that money and bought one, I'm still going to have to wait. So going out and buying suppressors while everyone's panicking, not really an option, but you should still consider purchasing these with a plan. You can never go wrong buying batteries. And again, like I said earlier, not in any particular order, but radio communications, especially if you have people to talk to, uh, very important. I've got a little Yasu over here. I've got a Motorola right here. We're gonna have some other content on radios here in the future. There's lots of great stuff out there on the internet already, but you should consider radio communications in your preparedness plan because, well, cell towers and phones uh, aren't always up and everyone knows that at this point. One of the most important things you can spend money on, and any of you Tarkov players know what I'm talking about, is good hearing protection. Most of you guys watching this probably started with a pair of Howard lights. They're like $50. Yes, they're amplified. Yes, they're electronic. But boy, those things do not cancel noise very well. I'm going to assume with uh, my educated opinion, you will have hearing damage using uh, that hearing protection if you shoot a whole lot of rifle with it. Um, the stock breaks your, the, the, the suction of the ear cup and you're just gonna have some issues. I highly recommend investing in some good hearing protection. It does make a pretty big difference when you start to compare them to the cheaper stuff, especially if it's comms capable, like this set of Peltors. So this could go the same time as your radio communication stuff. You could purchase this earlier, but I highly recommend getting a good set of EarPro because it makes a huge difference when it comes to shooting rifle. Weapons maintenance. You can go build your own kits. You can buy kits online. You can buy lube and brushes and boar snakes and all of that. You should have something like that to go with your rifle. Probably purchased a while ago to go with your gun at the same time. Laser rangefinders slash monocular systems are super convenient. They can give you a distance. They can sometimes even give you a firing solution if they have onboard, an onboard ballistic computer like this one with the Geo Ballistics. It can fit in a chest rig pocket. Uh, you can use it for observation. It's one of the most slept on pieces of equipment uh, and it's not just for snipers. Kestrel on the other hand, a uh, little bit more for snipers, but they're not insanely expensive for all the different things these can do. They're not just for reading wind. Uh, you can also they have an onboard ballistic computer that can tell you what you should do with your rifle and run some calculations. You should consider both of these, but definitely the laser rangefinder. And you guys are probably wondering, man, he took forever to talk about armor. Armor is the first thing I want. If armor is the first thing you want, you probably already own a bunch of this stuff. You probably already have the rifles. You've already got the pistol. You already can seal carry. You probably already have some medical. And for the most part, when we started carrying armor back in, I want to say it was 2020, most of the gun owners that we talked to already owned all this and they wanted to get armor. It was, it's that logical progression after you get all of this. And that's kind of what I'm illustrating here. There's a lot of things that can happen before you even get to armor. But I've got some HESCO plates right here. These are the M210s. They're very capable. These are sappy size, so a medium set of these will go into a medium sized plate carrier. And I've got one of our AC1s here, but any slick carrier is what I would recommend. For the average citizen in times such as these where you don't necessarily know what you might need armor for, having something that can flex from concealment, where I could potentially wear it underneath a hoodie, I can pack it into a duffel bag really easily, I can then wear my chest rig on top of it, you know, so I have a little bit of um, modularity as far as what's going on. Um, is going to be more effective than just having one large carrier that you can only use for large plate carrier stuff. Further along in the process, you might want to consider night vision. I've got a PBS-14 down there with a helmet to go with it. You might want to purchase the helmet sooner to protect your head. That's kind of what helmets are for. But a lot of folks out there end up buying a helmet around the same time as night vision because it really is the best way to actually wear night vision for a prolonged period of time. If in the process you are buying night vision, you have a rifle as well, which you should definitely have a rifle first. You probably want to get a laser around the same time so you have a way of shooting with that rifle easily. Yes, you could shoot passive through something like an EOTech or a, a higher end optic, uh, even some of the cheaper ones, but an IR laser is going to make it a lot easier with a single tube uh, night vision device like the PVS-14. So all of that kind of probably goes together. 
There's all kinds of other like survival tools that you can add to your chest rig and your plate carrier and your kit. Knives, multi-tools, rescue tools. That just really comes down to your personal preference, but are definitely things to consider when you're building out your kit. And then last but not least, because again, in no particular order, a pack. Because you might need to carry all this stuff and a bunch of extra stuff and actually go somewhere. So think about buying a pack. It doesn't necessarily have to be one of the fancy, expensive military ones. The backpacking community is innovating various backpacks that, in my opinion, and the opinion of a bunch of other folks out there, are surpassing what the military has because the civilian industry can just move a little bit faster. They don't have to build according to certain military standards if they're building for civilians. And so there's some really good ultra lightweight backpacks that are still very durable, can still you know, carry a lot of equipment, but they're just lighter than some of the traditional military packs out there. So you're probably looking at all this equipment from, with our top-down camera going, wow, that is a lot of stuff. I only own a little bit of it. Or I own a lot of ammo and I own nothing of the stuff over there. I don't have armor. I don't have night vision. I have no way of seeing in the dark. I don't even have a headlamp, but I have 20,000 you know, rounds of ammunition. And the thing to think about is, yes, we definitely don't want to put all of our eggs in one basket. We also want to remember that being prepared isn't just about having all this equipment. We've all heard of the preppers that hide away in the mountains. They have bunkers, they've got food for years, they've got water, they have completely self-sufficient. And then when you see the guy, he weighs like 400 pounds, extremely unhealthy, and doesn't actually possess any hard skills. The most important thing that you can take away from this video is not so much, hey, I need to go buy some equipment or buy certain things, or you know, making a plan, I would say, is actually a very important thing to take away from this video. But one of the most important things is your hard skills and your capability as a person are far going to outweigh what equipment that you have. And I see people get real spun up on the internet. We've all seen it on exactly what kit and what gear and whatnot. And they can't even shoot to begin with. They can't even do some of the things that they want the equipment for. So focus more on your hard skills and just your capability as a citizen while also creating a plan to purchase certain equipment so that you can actually utilize that equipment in addition, you know, in conjunction with your hard skills because that is what actually makes people prepared. And I've got a lot to work on on my own. I'm in the gym trying to get more fit. There's certain equipment and gear I don't have. And people are going to make mistakes because life happens. There's a lot of things to focus on. It was months after I purchased my new house that I even had fire extinguishers. I just wasn't thinking about it. I was not prepared for a fire, even a small one happening in my house. And it was months later I went, oh shoot, I should probably have fire extinguishers in my new house because I just wasn't thinking about it. And everyone's gonna have that. It's just, that's just how it is. But we can still be planning and trying to think of these things ahead of time so we're not in a rush when something happens around the world that triggers panic buying. We should not be controlled by panic buying of the masses as far as our preparation and preparedness goes. And while we can't be prepared for everything, we can't be prepared for what might happen in the United States, we can always get more prepared, or as the military likes to say, you can always improve your fighting position. Thanks for watching.